heard his name, even seen it on the side of a building on the UT campus. But do you know the story of Clarence Brown? The acclaimed director from the golden age of Hollywood has deep East Tennessee roots. 10 News anchor Robin Wilhoyt has more on the man dubbed the star maker. The yearling, which you can see the poster behind me. And discover a baby deer. Oh, I loved animals. I still love animals. And I, it just had such a, 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 an effect on me. In that 1946 classic, a boy adopts a troublemaking deer. That film and other works of Clarence Brown had such an effect on author Gwenda Young, she wrote a biography on the acclaimed yet elusive director titled Hollywood's Forgotten Master. When you look through his films, lists of his films, then you kind of go, oh, oh, I know that film. Oh, I've seen that film. So he's not forgotten in that sense that his films are there, but he, the, the man who is responsible for them um, may have been overlooked. Young says Clarence Brown's life story deserves its rightful place in the history books of Hollywood. And then when he was about 11 or 12, he came to Knoxville, so around the turn of the century. Young Clarence attended Knoxville High School and at the age of 15 enrolled at the University of Tennessee. By 19, he graduated with two degrees in engineering and then was off to serve in World War I as a fighter pilot. But it was during his next chapter as the owner of a car dealership, Young says Brown had an epiphany. He decided he wanted to be in the movies. It was the era of silent films. Brown found a way into the industry as an apprentice and eventually landed behind the camera as a director. His background in engineering easily allowed him to transition to directing movies with sound, and he found a home at one of Hollywood's most prestigious studios, MGM. He was entrusted with the most prized asset of MGM Studios, which was Greta Garbo. What does it feel like to be in love with a horse? His 1944 film, National Velvet, launched Elizabeth Taylor to stardom. And a young Claude Jarman Jr., whom he cast in The Yearling, went on to win a special Oscar. Now living in Northern California, the 88-year-old remembers Brown as a father figure and a taskmaster. He knew what he wanted, and he would take the time to get it. By the time the well-respected director retired in 1952, his name had graced the credits of more than 50 films. Clarence Brown was an undisputed force in the industry, despite the fact he was nominated more than a half dozen times for Academy Awards, but never brought home an Oscar. He was one of those directors like Hitchcock who kept getting no nominated for Oscars and never winning. His biographer says Brown did amass wealth through his movies, but most of his money came through real estate. The savvy businessman bought up property during his early days in L.A. He saw the potential that this was, this was an industry that was going to expand and the city would then expand. In 1967, Brown donated $500,000 to the creation of a new theater on the University of Tennessee campus. Two years later, UT's native son laid the cornerstone on the building that bared his name and set the stage for future directors, actors, and others. The whole connection with Knoxville and the university there had kind of rejuvenated him, made him feel, you know, that he was a part of things again. And he was very excited by that. Clarence Brown pledged his lifetime support of the theater. For admirers like Gwenda Young, Clarence Brown was more than just a director. He was an innovator and an influencer who deserves to be remembered for more than just the magic he brought to the silver screen. And I think when we're all sitting in the dark in Knoxville's uh, theater looking at these films, we'll hopefully come to that sense of appreciation of being transported, you know, transported into a different world. Thank <laughs> you.